This is a Nassau grouper. They used to be a staple food in the U.S. Virgin Islands until the population was nearly wiped out. But I'm getting ahead of myself. To understand what happened, first we need to understand what a spawning aggregation is. Think of a spawning aggregation like a New York City nightclub. Rhythmic moving, color changing, flirting, well, scientists call it courtship behavior. And it all leads to sex. Spawning aggregations are large gatherings of fish for the sole purpose of reproduction. Nassau grouper travel a long way to spawn. That makes understanding the population size confusing. In the 1970s, fishermen were fishing the spawning aggregation like crazy, and they were catching a ton of fish. To be fair, it did seem like an endless supply of fish. But overfishing the spawning aggregation led to a population collapse. So they closed the Nassau grouper fishery, and it is still closed today. The thing I wondered is, can the Nassau grouper population ever come back? And that is what Rick, Sean, Rob, and Rossi are looking into. The team from University of Virgin Islands Center for Marine and Environmental Studies headed out to a reforming Nassau grouper spawning aggregation on the Germanic Bank, and I got to tag along. Grouper only spawn a few months early in the year during the full moon, so the team has to make every moment count. Once they haul the grouper aboard, they get right to work. They do an ultrasound to determine the fish's sex. Then they measure the fish. Uh, 75.5 is fork. They take a fin clip, which they will take back to the lab for genetic studies. And here's where it gets exciting. If the fish is healthy, Rick performs a surgery where he inserts an acoustic transmitter into the fish's body. So that's the transmitter here. It transmits a unique signal that we have some acoustic receivers that uh, pick up that signal. The transmitter communicates with receivers stationed underwater, which log fish movement data, a process called acoustic telemetry. By tracking their movements, you can actually then help to define marine protected area boundaries around that. Then Rick and his team suit up to escort the grouper safely back to the seafloor. We're headed down to drop the tagged fish onto the reef so they don't get eaten by predators, and then we're going to do a fish survey to see how many endangered Nassau and yellowfin grouper are down on so the reef. So basically, they are monitoring a reforming Nassau grouper spawning aggregation. And while they're down there, they survey the population for more data, using video cameras to record behaviors and lasers to measure size, to see how many are out there and where they go. Closer to shore, Bo noticed that baby Nassau grouper are starting to appear in the seagrass. So, Bo is catching baby grouper and putting a unique color tag on their tail, so that he also can track their movement and growth. Look at that, so, so now you can see him in the water. So what's the purpose of all this data collection? Well, the team hopes to understand the complexities of the grouper population. Right now we have like experience a big pulse of juveniles. So right now it's really important to figure out where they're living and why we have such a high um, population mm -hmm. NASA grouper, because they're endangered. And that's one of the questions we're trying to understand is, is there a genetic relationship between the adults that are spawning off of St. Thomas and the babies that are arriving to the shores of St. Thomas. All this tagging, measuring, and counting will help them do that. The fishermen here really respect spawning aggregations, I think. I see sub-adults in the harbor all the time. Um, and, and five years ago, I didn't, they were very, very, very rare. Fishing a spawning aggregation may be detrimental for the population as a whole, but that shouldn't keep us from fishing altogether. Rick hopes that their research will help fishers and managers restore the vibrant Nassau grouper population so that it becomes a thriving, sustainable fishery.